are getting this obviously got this new stream set up as such so we're just trying to see how it rolls out yeah the music's pretty fly 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 what am i talking about anyways what's good people is everyone all right let me get this music down turn it down ever so slightly hey t-bone what's good <laughs> Right, is the music at a reasonable level, guys? Are you all good with that? Peace, do what's good, man. Wicked, wicked. All right, then, cool. I need to know if this has been shared in the Discord. Let's see, has that been put across the Discord? I don't know. Should be. see where it is here we are yep boom happy days all right then cool let's get with it so let me flip over the charts and let's have a conversation 
Yeah, Dan, I'm all good, man. I'm all good. I'm all good. All right, guys. So, this is how it's going to roll tonight. All right. I hope everyone is doing very well this evening. Okay. We're going to go through a couple of things this evening. And then I'm going to leave you be. So, in the first instance, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and what's going on right there. We've got to address the elephant in the room. All right. Because the general consensus is Bitcoin is crashing. Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Because based on the idea of what we talk about in the streams with the methodology that we focus on, when it's crashing, we understand something else. Now, people probably think that we're crazy, but we're following a business model here. The market makers method is their business model. It's nothing that we've all come up with. Okay. You have got people in the past that have labeled the market maker as the guy behind the scenes the composite man the wyckoff method not really seeing any of that being discussed right now which pretty much solidifies when i say that that method itself is a visual thing all right so if you can't see the actual accumulation in the distribution phases you're not going to pay attention to it so what do you do you go back to what you were doing before all right and it's true i ain't seen any not many people talking about it not that it's not a good strategy back then it was criticized and even today it's criticized but the concept is very real the composite man does exist the market maker the guy behind the scenes all right just to help you the new guys understand so once we roll through bitcoin and ethereum okay we're gonna highlight certain areas in the chart that we're gonna apply understanding of the hybrid system so that new people are aware what's going on rather than them coming in here trying to siphon out what is actually being discussed here then we're going to have a look at some altcoins we're going to have a look at what coins are actually making moves now a week or so ago i actually done a stream on the altcoins we had a look at which ones made moves and which ones are looking to make moves all right so we're going to go back to those and we're going to see if any of those projections played out all right and then I let you guys be and you can continue about your day. All right. Cool. All right, then. So let's have a conversation. Bitcoin. For anybody new, this is the Bitcoin one hour time frame. All right. The platform that I use is MT4. MT4 is a very old school platform. And the reason it's old school is because market makers still use it to this day. This is where 90% of all institutional traders, banks, hedge funds all get their feeds to. All right. Except for us as retail traders, there's a little bit of a delay. Okay. This platform is an electronic central network. All right. We get our prices filled at a moment's notice. There's no lag. There's no delay. Okay. Sometimes there may be a little bit of slippage. Now, slippage is when you get a misquote on your on your platform itself, but it rectifies itself straight after. The last time I had slippage was about three, four years ago. All right, so not something that happens all the time. All right, is it too high? How's that? The music all good now? Are we good? Music all good? Perfect. Happy days. All right then. Cool. So, let's get with it. I will be going over to Trade Infuse, so don't worry. I'll be doing that in the second part. What's been going on with Bitcoin? All right then. Look, if we were watching last night's stream, all right, we are trying to focus on why does price make moves at certain points where are the turning points in the chart well the only way you can determine where the turning points are is where you if you look at things psychologically where has price behaved with the most impact all right back with the concept of the whole numbers yesterday look at the thirty-two thousand mark in last night's session smacked it straight down and now it's come all the way back up 
They built their lungs below key notable areas, triggered all the orders down here, induced everyone to go short, and they've reversed price back up. All right. What did we say last time? Look at this. Look at what happened with this. On this day, <clears throat> they brought price above. Remember the daily open? Price came all the way back down. This is when Bitcoin dropped nearly 15%. All right. New York reversal comes into play. They bring price all the way back up and they close higher. Yeah. We come across to today and you've got pretty much the same story. Price drops in the Asian session, spikes the low, three pins to the low, and then it reverses back up and closes higher. That to me tells me that we may be getting a repeat from what happened last time and this may be the point that bitcoin actually does start to move up now that's my projection what do i know all i know is that i have to pay attention to the key points in the chart that are effectively the clues by the market maker so let's look at this this move right now is very psychological there are so many factors that are coming into play to induce traders to believe that price is dropping. Now, granted, they may even send price down even further. OK, but as traders, you have to appreciate the concept of uncertainty because anything can change at a moment's notice. All right. Anything. Yeah, it looks like it looks like we're doing OK. Um Aceta Actilus, Actilus. So if you're saying that off Twitch, then that means we're doing something correct. <laughs> okay. 3.5. Ah, oh, Paul, what's going on? 3.5 ETH, all the field at 1875, midway after last the unhit. Liquidity pool, funny that. <laughs> Wonderful. That's awesome, bro. Well done, Paul. Well done. Great to have everyone here, man. That's awesome. All right, then cool so back to what we were saying this area here now for anybody new right i don't really look at charts from you know completely from a technical standpoint all right we have to understand how it become technical right how does the candle develop how and what has made the candle finish in the way that it's finished how is the cycle been developed so here's why this pattern itself appears to be psychological all right on monday there was a false move now i don't normally trade on mondays especially in forex all right because there's a false move on monday because you have to understand forex doesn't open until sunday sunday night or should i say monday morning early hours so 10 p.m the market opens in forex okay so the weekend is a no-go zone for um, for Forex, all right? Now, when Monday comes in, the general sentiment for people is, look, it's time to trade. I'm excited. There's some news that's come out about dollar yen or something's happened economically around the world. I want to put my money on my trades because I haven't been able to trade, all right? So that's where Monday comes in. So the Asian session, they fulfill that. They make that a reality happen for those guys, which is why you see the Asian session move price higher. Same principle comes into Bitcoin. They move price higher. It's at this point here where you can premeditate where things are going to go. Why? Because if they spike price higher and there's no confirmation of it continuing, it's a false move. Now, we understand fast move is the false move. That's the principle. All right. When price just comes out of a zone out of nowhere and it doesn't really gain ground and the candle that precedes it doesn't show conviction that it wants to go further, you've got a false move. OK, look what happens. Price hits the high, comes down, makes one last hit to the high. Divergence comes into play. Price then drops. Now, if you look at the line chart itself, all right. At this point, what do you see? You see three hits to the high. All right. Is that a 12th of July? Is that the same? Yep, 12th of July. Yeah, that's the same. 
You can see it. Three hits to the high, which can be translated as a head and shoulders or a variation of an M pattern. All right? That's what a M formation is. All right? Variation of an M. Um, variation of the head and shoulders pattern. All right? Price then drops down, recovers the green vector candle. And where do they do all of that? They do it above the 34,000 mark. So they got the guys committed to going long on the 34,000 because there was a ton of orders there. Price spikes up and then it spikes back down again. So they set the shorts, ride the shorts to the high, get them filled at the highest possible point, And then with the liquidity for the moon boy who thinks price is going to keep continuing to the upside, he uses their stops and liquidations that he set in and around this zone to get his positions or his shorts closed at a lower point, which is then what causes this move to go to the downside. So the big red candle that appears here makes the retail trader get stopped out. He then says, oh, Bitcoin's now reversing. Oh, I need to wait for confirmation. So what happens? The moving averages cross. And what do we understand about the moving averages? This would be deemed as a death cross. All right. So this is on the hourly. People would see this as a death cross. So people then start trading it on that principle. So it breaks down. Traders are now committed. Look at this red vector candle. Price comes down. They're saying, right, the death cross is in full play. Let's see what we can get from it. As they drop the price down, they reverse back to the 50 EMA to hit the stops. Now, what's happening in this point right here is there are two important lines on the chart. The psychological high and the psychological low. Now, the psychological high and low are the only forms of support and resistance that matter in trading. Or should I say, in yeah, well, across the board in Forex and in crypto. And the reason is because... The psychological high and low is the range, which is these two green lines. It's the gap that the market makers set the spread at the start of each trading week. They set their positions, okay, within this range. Now, price can do one of two things. It can either rise above it and continue or go below it and continue. When it's back inside that range, that's when it can get a little bit tricky because you're then trying to work out does the market make a favor price above the psychological high or below the psychological low? These are the two true forms of support and resistance. All right. Look at where it sits on the retrace back to the 50 EMA. Can you see that? The psychological low is right there. Price pulls back straight to it, rejects it, and then moves away from that point. All right. That's the true support and resistance in the chart. Not the stuff that you see on TikTok where a guy just simply draws a line and hopes for the best because that line that he draws is always based in hindsight. So come check this out. All right. Let me pull up a zone which will pretty much put that story to bed. Okay. Where is it? Hmm. We could start with this actually. Okay then. Support and resistance. Let me draw a new line here. Change the color of it. Happy days. Make it yellow. All right then. So, hypothetically, let's assume that this candle is here and this candle's not here yet. Okay? So ignore this part of the chart right here. Focus on this point here. All right? So, the TikTok trader tells you, you know, work off support and resistance because old resistance becomes new support. New support becomes old resistance. Um, old support becomes new resistance. Old resistance becomes new support. Okay. Now, this is what we need to really try and pay attention to. Okay. So, hold on a second. What's going on here? Why is that happening? Give me a second, guys. Why on earth is my stream coming? I think we've got a boomer moment coming. No. Is there a boomer moment on its way? Surely not. Surely there's no boomer moment right now. Ah, wonderful. There isn't a boomer moment. Happy days. We've got our shit to... Oh, excuse me. We've got our stuff together. <laughs> I can't really be swearing. I shouldn't be swearing. That's so bad. <laughs> Okay, then. Cool. Right. 
yeah crypto i know tiktok is banning that across the board now i ha i am on tiktok but i haven't posted on that for a very long time and now that they've put this ban on top so i mean what what can i say there's nothing more to say all right but let me just talk about this support and resistance concept okay so if you were the trader now ignore this part of the chart right here if you were to draw this as resistance okay you would say that when price comes and closes above that point again okay or goes above it then when price comes back down to that point it's going to act as support well that's flawed all right because when you draw your line at that high you're waiting for price to come back down you then draw another line to show the support at this point right here okay so then you say to yourself all right i've got two points in the chart that i'm waiting for price to move from now remember market makers and and all the algorithms are such that are behind the scenes of this are aware that people trade these sort of zones okay so look this is at a high so people like to put orders at a high people also think that when price makes a new high retraces and continues back up okay when it comes back down, it's going to test that point and it's going to act as support because it was previously resistance. But look what happened. You took your line and you drew it here. You took your new line and you drew it there. So that's your resistance. That's your support. So then you wait. Price then does this massive extended move to the upside. You start to get a little bit excited. You got the trigger finger ready. And then the next candle spikes lower and then goes high completely takes out this area here you're solidified in the intention that this now was previous resistant it's now going to be new support so you place your orders and hope that price continues from that point but look what happens it just completely pulls straight back and continues lower so where's the concept of support and resistance because that thing of old support becomes new resistance and what have you and new support becomes old resistance, whatever the way it's said. It throws, it's, it's been ingrained in traders' minds to believe that, but we've just pretty much put to bed that concept because it's at a high, it previously hit that point, it's come back down and stabilized, and now it's moved away from that point. People draw lines on that basis, okay? And look, price spikes up, fulfills those orders. Guys went long right here. People went long. They opened positions, all right? Then they reverse price back and it comes down. So then when we come down to this point right here, the guy who saw that this was previous support, okay, he's going to be thinking, okay, is this now going to be tested as resistance? He's going to wait for the break. So then what happens? It breaks. He gets in, goes lower. The next candle brings it down, spikes it all the way back up, gets his stops taken out. The next candle opens, spikes up again, throws the retail trader off but then price does continue lower, okay? So going back to the true support and resistance aspect, okay? This area here of the psychological high and the psychological low, this is where the market maker steps in. This is where he makes his moves. Now, when you go back in the previous streams, you'll see the power of these psychological lines at how price just sticks at that point. It either moves away from it or continues to stay within it because this is where the market maker sets the spread, the range between the high and the low. It's the first high and the first low that is taken once the new market starts, okay? Now, the new market starts at different times, different servers, because everyone is using a different broker as such, okay? This is why I use MT4. All right, if you want MT4, it is a free platform. You can download it. Links are in the description. Happy days. All right. But the psychological high and low gives you a lot of information. Look at the confluence of what's happened with this move to the downside right here. Notable volume comes down and stabilizes. Okay, the Asian session brings price back in towards the 50 EMA and then it pulls straight back. Funnily enough, the 50 EMA and the psychological low are acting as confluence here which could effectively set us up for a drop down in price you can see in the uk session here the brinks box now the brinks box is in america you know the big brinks box truck that brings the money this is the money trade this is where it pretty much sets up the trade to determine what's going to happen for the rest of the day 
and in both instances from here and from here they set up the range okay you can decipher exactly what they are planning on doing now whether it goes through or not is a different story welcome to trading okay <laughs> todd man that's kind of you bro very kind of you man thank you well, wherever you are in the world, man, I don't know if I'm allowed to go because I ain't taking no vaccine. So, but that's that's it. <laughs> but thank you very much, my friend. God bless you. You are wrong here. Always wait for flip, support resistance, confirmation. No one is going long, as you said. Well, it's not that no one's going long, okay? It's other people are going long, and it's those other people that we're waiting for. Remember, there is no static strategy. There is no strategy out there, all right, that will guarantee to you that if it's applied at a certain point, it's going to play out. The two words that people need to understand, well, three even, is variation on the theme. All right? The way I trade off the vector candles at one point may not be the same at the next point. That's uncertainty. And this is why a lot of people lose in this game because they think, oh, I've got a strategy now. I've paid for an indicator. I'm paying for this robot. I'm going to put it to the charts and then hope for the best. It's going to do its job. Well, no, because there are different situations and different circumstances that happen at every moment the candle moves. Okay? Have you ever been in a trade where out of nowhere price just goes and explodes out of nowhere? Just like completely throws you off and just goes in one direction. Sometimes it's in your favor, sometimes it's not. But you have had that experience. And you have to embrace the concept of uncertainty in this game. Because if you don't, you'll be then coming in with the mindset of expectation. And when you come with the expected mindset, you are then being results-based orientated. So that means you've already premeditated how you want the trade to play out. So then if your trade is, a go is going against you, you'll be then psychologically compelled to hold the trade. And then you're going to get caught up in the, in the mindset of, I can't close this trade because I'm married to the idea of what I wish it would like, or what I wish it could become. This is why traders can't close trades. This is why you get into the situation where you say to yourself, hold on, I'm at a $500 loss now. Ah, don't worry about it. So, you're not really content in closing a $500 loss because you feel like you're going to miss out on a move. But you're happy to close it when that loss is at $3,000. Why? Why didn't you close at $500 and restart again? Because ultimately a loss is this. A loss is telling you how much money you are risking right now and how much drawdown you're experiencing to pay for the idea of being wrong. That's what it is. How long are you going to stay wrong for? How long are you going to stay in the wrong trade? And a lot of people do that. People stay in the trade for a very long time because you're going through these certain emotions as the trade is going against you, all right? You've got the concept of, I've spent so long trying to catch this move. You know? It's, it's a very difficult situation to get yourself in, all right? Try and make the conviction that when you place a trade if it goes against you have in the back of your mind how long am i prepared to see red to know that i'm wrong all right that's where people get it wrong that's why people blow their accounts because they don't want to be wrong you can't come to this game and think that, and you know, you see any successful trader, do you think he wins consistently or he never experiences a loss? He may finish positive at the end of the day. But has he lost any? He probably has. Or some traders, they don't. Depends on the strategy. I'm not saying there is a 100% strategy out there. But what I'm saying to you is, is there are people that finish positive at the end of the day 
and they probably won only 40% of their trades. That makes you think, doesn't it? How is it possible to only be winning 40% of the time and still be end up positive? Simple. Risk management. It's a simple concept that people throw about all the time, but the problem with risk management is it's mistaken for math formula. Yes, you need to understand the percentages of risk on your account, but the most important aspect of trading is survival. If you don't come with a survival instinct in this game, all right, you ain't going to survive. If you just come to it and say, I've got $200, yeah, forget it, I don't care if I lose or win or whatever. Well, guess what? You're going to lose. You ain't going to try and survive. Which is why I say to a lot of people, start with the smallest amount of money that you can trade with to give you the passport to step in and see if you can grow it. We got a guy who grew $10 into $4,600. That to me is fantastic. He gets something. He's not focused on making money. He's focused on the execution of the trade. Yeah? Okay. So, back to Bitcoin. What is she actually doing? Well, look at it like this. If we look on the higher time frame, okay, we've been in this peak formation as such for the past two weeks nearly, all right? It forms a low, comes back up, drops again, and makes a massive move to the upside, and then stabilizes. We would understand this to be a level one consolidation. Now, this level one consolidation can last for as long as it wants, it will only reset when price comes down to this point here. Now, what am I talking about? All right? I'll show you for anybody new in the stream. Okay? I will help you understand why we're talking about peak formations, W patterns, and everything else that goes with it. Okay? So, let me bring up this chart for you. To help you understand what's going on. Now, you guys are probably familiar with this. This is pretty much what the Wyckoff distribution method looks like. All right. But it's a little bit different. Why? Because timing is critical on this. That's one thing that the Wyckoff method doesn't really pay much attention to. Is the timing. All right. So, this is where we are right now with Bitcoin. We've got a peak formation. This is a W formation right here. Flip over to the chart. You can see the W formation has been formed right here. Okay. You can see, forgive the lines, but you can see a W pattern right there. All right. Principally, we want price to come away from that zone. Because the reason we want it to come away from that point is because this pattern itself is psychological. When price is dropping, it means that the retail trader is going short. But the market maker is building his longs. He then reverses price to the 50 EMA to take out the stops for the guys who went short. He uses their money to get his longs opened and starts realizing a profit. At the same token, he wants to induce them to get in again because they feel that they've missed out on this move to the downside. So he rejects the 50 EMA and it drops. You see the notable candles right there. You can see the red vector candles here. Right there. One, two and three. Three pushes to the low. Then what happens? They shift out of the zone. They move out of that area. And the reason why they move out of that point is because they've trapped enough liquidity in this area to start realizing a return on their longs to the upside. Remember, the market maker doesn't go long when price is at its highest. That's what the retail trader does. That's what the moon boy does. He goes long when price is rising, right? The market maker goes long when it's dropping. He also goes short when it's rising because what do you want to do when you get into a short? You don't get in a short when it's dropping. You get in a short whilst price is rising with the anticipation of price to come back down. Okay? You want to get in a short at the highest possible point. Yeah? I'm sure we all agree on that. So, coming back to this. Now, this is for my new guys here. All right? Peak formation, W. W. Right now, we are in level one. Now, this is just a template of how we expect price to behave throughout a week. This is a weekly cycle, okay? The first start of the week, we see the pattern. Then price rises up, forms level one. This is day one, okay? So when price comes back down and consolidates here, 
we're anticipating that price is going to come back up and take out the previous level. If we see that happening, it triggers that we are in a cycle because they favor higher prices. They don't want price to come any lower to the previous point where they had built their longs at lower prices. However, they can still bring price down lower. They can even come straight down to the second leg of this W formation and they can bounce away from it. The only way it will be deemed as a reset is if this level one consolidation actually breaks below the, the pattern itself. All right. Which is where we are right now. Look, if we zoom out, you can see Bitcoin in this zone right here. These are the two levels that we are paying attention to. Now, granted, if Bitcoin is dropping, it ain't crashing. You guys haven't seen what a crash is. All right. This move right here for the record, guys. This move right here by Bitcoin. All right. It stayed within its average daily range. Do you understand that? It stayed within its average daily range. So in other words, Bitcoin travels a certain distance on a day to day trading um, during a trading day. All right. And the only reason it travels in that certain direction is so that it doesn't trigger chaos in the market. All right. Now, what's important to understand is this. People see this as a crash, but it's not a crash. You would not know what a crash is. OK, this is not a crash. They are just slowly moving price. OK, it's slowly dropping. All right. A crash is Bitcoin going straight down to 11,000 at a moment's notice. You will know what a crash is, my friends. When there's nothing you can do, they can't. They don't let you take out your money from the exchanges. All your trades are gone to, to the pan. There's nothing you can do. There's chaos across the board. I guess they use the word crash just to trigger people to do something. But you'll know what a crash is. All right? A true crash. Look at the subprime mortgage crisis that happened in 2007 to 2008 in the US. That crashed the market. That was a complete reset. But then you have to understand that the US market itself, the stock market and the economy as a whole was on a 284 month economic expansion. They needed to reset. You can't be make you can't be expanding for the, such a long period of time and not contract. Yeah. Food for thought. <laughs> Cretania, you know. So. Peak formation. We are still in level one. Now, this is where people get a little bit thrown off. Back to why people trade um, indicators and strategies based on what the hindsight concept discuss. People look for this W formation. They find it. They then wait for price to rise. They see it. They then wait for a consolidation. They see it. But then what happens? They expect it to come back up. So what do they do? At a moment's notice, if they see price moving back towards this point here, they start going long. All right. Because they think now that price is going to start making a move to the upside. All right. Now, there are a number of factors that needed to come into play for you to verify whether or not price was going to continue to rise up on the basis that you were going to break out of this area here to continue higher. Now, this is the four hour time frame. So there's nothing stopping you from taking advantage of something like this to the upside because from this point down here all the way to there, that's nearly what? That's a lot of pips that you can earn. That's a big price movement, all right? From 35 all the way down to 32. That's a big price difference, okay? In the strategy itself, guys, there is always going to be a variation to it. And the sooner you have that in your mind, the more flexible you're going to be with your trading and you're going to have more of a probabilistic mindset and say to yourself, how much money am I prepared to risk to understand that I'm wrong? Yeah. At the same token, how much money am I happy to earn from this or how much money needs to be presented to me to be grateful and take what is it, whatever is given to me by the market, which is another concept that people struggle with. I've had many guys come into the streams and say to me, yo, Tina, I've been using the hybrid system. I'm currently in a profitable trade. I've got profits all over the place, but I don't know when to close. What? The whole idea of trading is to get you to realize a profit. You're leaving money on the table by keeping your trades live. 
okay and if you're having to ask where should i exit you need to get out of that trade as soon as possible why because it means that you have no structure behind your positioning if you don't know when to get out you're not going to be aware of when to get out because you're going to be blindsided by the idea of your, your account rising in value you're now becoming a money orientated trader rather than a a, a trader that is focusing on the idea of trading itself as in understanding the process and focusing on the art this is an art form guys it's a form of expression the way your character is determined by your ability to trade why because if you're an impulsive person you can be impulsive you can be a scalper at the same token you can come here and burn money and be impulsive like that it's an expression of your character in the realm of uncertainty that's all it is how are you behaving in an in an industry which you don't know what's going to happen next yeah you don't know what's going to happen next so have that in your mind when you're trying to draw out patterns or if you're using other indicators remember indicator it indicates something is happening it doesn't mean that it's going to happen it indicates a change right cool So, let's go back to Bitcoin. Based on that principle alone, all right, I am on the four-hour time frame. I like to work off the hourly, but I'm just doing this for bigger and that, um, just to help you see an overview. We like to look at certain candlesticks. 90% of the decisions I make on trading are purely based off the notable volume candles you see on this chart. So, that's the green and the red vector candles, all right? I break down my analysis to the point where I say, right, how many vector candles can I see? What are we forming? Are we potentially forming a new W? So a pattern within a pattern. Because you can get that. You can get another W. For example, this could be a new W forming right now. So what would make what may happen? Price may come back down. And this is the first criteria of the development of a W. Three vector candles to the lows. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see three vector candles, three pushes. The number three is very important. Go and get yourself any book off Amazon. Okay, I can guarantee to you when it talks about certain patterns like pennants, um, bull flags, bear flags, Toblerones, whatever you want to call them. All right, triangles all over the place. It will tell you at the third hit or even on moving averages. The third hit of the moving average, make your entry. Or the third break, the third tap. Three is a psychological number. It's the magic number. They even sing about it. All right? They know that these books tell people to do that. So imagine thousands and thousands of people looking at a zone in the chart that gets hit three times. The first time, it's resistance. The second time, it's resistance. The third time, well, guess what? Are we going to make our entry? Bang. You make your entry. It goes up. You've gone in because the book says make your entry on the third hit because it shows that it's got conviction. It's going to move in that direction. And guess what? It pulls back. Why does that happen? Because they know people are watching these zones. They place their orders. Yeah. So. Are we forming a W formation? Because principally, this is what may happen. Price may come up now to the 50 EMA. It might trade a little bit higher because we've got the psychological high and the psychological low in sight. So we are now going to know if the psychological low is going to act as resistance. All right. If I drop down to the one hour time frame, you can see right now that the psychological low is in sight, which is right there. All right. Bitcoin needs to come up above that and break away from it. In order for us to really understand that there's momentum in this move. Another criteria that is required is the 13 EMA needs to cross over the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame to denote that there is momentum behind the movement. All right. The RSI. How many people trade with the RSI?
How many of you trade on the RSI? Okay. That's fair. TDI, yeah. Now remember, the TDI in conjunction with things works very well. As I've said before, if I had a 100-point checklist of um, confluences that needed to be considered before I place an entry, okay, the TDI would come in at 99. It would be the last thing. All right? The TDI itself, right, is just a posh RSI. If you want these indicators, go into the links in the description. Join the Discord. We've got a channel dedicated to all of these indicators. They're all free of charge. They don't cost you a penny. There are videos on the channel itself that show you how to use this. Okay? I've got about half an hour video which talks about the TDI in depth. Okay? But I'm going to break it down for you. The RSI implies relative strength index. All right? It's just the strength of momentum, the move, the volatility, all right? They have boundaries between, you know, anything above 70 is overbought. Anything below um, 30 is oversold, all right? But when you start adding other confluences to the mix, it starts to paint a picture for you, all right? Now, RSI by itself, okay, if you can work out the divergence from the peaks themselves, you're able to establish where there's going to be a slowdown in momentum, all right? So, look at how price has moved down here. Take into consideration what's happened at this low, this one, this one, and then this one down here. Looking at the RSI itself, you can see that this low came in strong momentum. All right? Turbo diesel into cooler. <laughs> Good old Volkswagen and Golf. So... RSI comes outside the volatility band. The volatility band is these blue lines right here. So it works on the principle of Bollinger Bands. All right. When they expand, it means there's volatility. When they contract, something is brewing. All right. Or should we say nothing's happening. When it comes out the volatility band, you are anticipating that it's going to want to come back into the volatility band by the principle of it being oversold. Okay. So that's where you see a shark fin head. Can you see? It looks like a bit of a shark fin. Let me bring this up and you'll see it for yourself. There's a shark fin head, right? It comes back into the volatility band. Now, some people simply trade off the TDI. And some people will look at it like this. They will wait for the RSI to come back into the volatility band and cross the market signal line, which is this red line here. That's the criteria for an entry based on the TDI. If it crosses over the uh, the comes back into the volatility band and crosses over the market signal and expands, it means that price is now going to be making a movement towards the market base to reset. All right. Now you look at price. Look at what happened. RSI comes down to the lows and moves away. RSI starts to rise, hits the market base, hits the 50 EMA, hits the psychological low, retraces back down. There's your confluences. We get our next point on the RSI. So look at this point right here. Look down here. We've got another shark fin, but guess what? It's within the volatility band. So we've got our first bit of divergence. So that means that as they are bringing price down at the lower point in the chart, they are closing higher. Something's going to change. It doesn't mean it's going to change, but you can exploit this because the RSI forms a shark fin and then comes back up towards the market signal, but gives you doesn't really last long because look, it only comes back up there and then it drops again. Now you can exploit this behavior if you're trading on smaller time frames because it was rising for what? One, two, three, four hours straight. Okay. Then we come down to this point in the chart. Look at the RSI. Comes back down to the volatility band, but stays inside the volatility band and then goes back up. That tells me that they are closing higher as they're going lower. It hasn't gone out the volatility band. Divergence is right there. We are expecting a reversal back up. And look what you have. You have the reversal. Now, Bitcoin is at an important point in the chart. It's sat right now at the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame, which is the 13 EMA on the four hour time frame. All right. In order for us to convict that Bitcoin is going to continue higher, we need to consider what pools of liquidity are in sight. So the nearest point is up here, which brings us to the 34,000 point, And we've got the 34,329. All right. 
those are the next points of interest now as you go lower into the smaller time frames all right you will see when you look left you can exploit potential pools of liquidity look at this this was a pool of liquidity right here all right so i'm going to highlight this red this candle here and i'm going to go right oh look at that funny that is they bring price back up to recover that vector candle, but then they come down and open more longs at a lower point. So they sucked in the retail trader, spiked price up, hit the liquidity pool from here, realized the positions on their longs right there and got a profit, brought price back down again to open more longs at a lower point. So with anticipation, they're going to be then looking to send price back up to this point to fill this wick and potentially make some more money on these positions here. The next pool after that is over here. You've got this liquidity right here. That's the M4, which sits at the 800 EMA on the 15 minute time frame, which is the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame, which happens to be above the psychological low. And then you've got this point up here, as we spoke about earlier on. All right. So when it comes to projecting, what are we waiting for? Well, look at it like this. Bitcoin now is trading above the 200 EMA on the 15 minute time frame, which is the 50 EMA on the one hour. What is happening here? They're trying to hold this zone. Is this the point that brings Bitcoin back up? But remember, how far will it go back up? Because when people see Bitcoin moving away from a low, they think it's going to go back up to 70K. That's the mistake that a lot of traders make. They see price moving from this point and then they think, right, okay, it's going to go back up now. Happy days. Let's start riding the move to the upside. And now everyone's bullish on Bitcoin. Bitcoin to 200,000, Bitcoin to 100,000, whatever. All right. You have to make sure that you prioritize your intention when you're trading. I don't really pay attention to price. I pay attention to points at price. So where is the notable volume appearing is it at the whole number the half number where is it appearing i'm not going to make none of my decisions based on what thumbnail says it should be going to a hundred thousand a million fifty thousand that's just really for people to get attention to get them to understand what they're talking about in their streams which is fair game welcome to youtube we're not going to you know hide away from the fact that you know we want to get people's attention that's the name of the game okay from this point now, Bitcoin can do one of two things. It can either hold the 200 EMA, 50 EMA, sorry, and move higher and find resistance at the 200 EMA, come back down and form the second leg of this big W formation. All right. So if I zoom out, you can see it right there. It can either come up, hit the 200 and form the second part of this W formation, which will bring us into the um what day is it today the 14th wednesday thursday coming into the weekend all right now usually on a friday bitcoin tends to form a pattern right we don't really see much activity on a friday the weekend things can get a bit tricky there all right so they may be forming a base however we may also get ourselves a v-shaped pattern because right now we're at the turning point in the chart we're at the 50 ema are they going to send price back down again well, I need to look up for any vector candles. Are there any vector candles to the lows? Have they been building any positions at the lows? Well, look. Look what we've got right here. We've got a vector candle right here. But the candle that preceded it itself continued to move away from the zone. That was conviction. The second green vector candle up here. Third one, sorry. Price came back down, tested the daily open, but moved away from that point. It's closed higher. Remember, we were down here today. All right. For any point in the chart to change, I need to get it towards the psychological low. That is where I'm expecting price to get to, the psychological low. Once it gets to that point, we will know exactly where we stand because that is the area that they built their positions. And then if they send it to this area up here and continue and break above the psychological high, happy days, we're going to have conviction to go back towards this point up here. And then we'll see how they stabilize from that point. All right. Cool. So, always have in your mind, you're messing with uncertainty. If you can't grasp uncertainty, get out of trading straight up. Because if you think you can come into this game with an idea in your mind, and just because it looks pretty in your mind, it's going to look pretty on the chart, you're going to lose money. You're only going to transfer your capital to the next trader who's waiting to exploit your wrong behavior. 
your wrong mindset. Because that's all it is, guys. This game is just a transition of wealth from one pocket to the next. It's the zero-sum game. You have to lose for someone else to win. Likewise, you know, we've got to take the good with the bad. When you win, someone else has to lose. Okay? So, I'm going to quickly look at Ethereum, and then we're going to go into some altcoins, and then we're going to call it a day. All right? Here we go. Ethereum. Now, I mean, look at Ethereum. Wow. Look at Ethereum. Ethereum has gone from forming a simple V-shaped pattern, which we understood here, to now coming down to forming a very big W formation. Out of the two coins, guys, in my opinion, Ethereum is the most technically sound current um, coin. Technically, when I say technically, she behaves well on the chart. She's clear with her intention. When she moves away from the 50 EMA, she always comes back down towards it. Not like Bitcoin where she chops and changes and, you know, she'll wait a little bit and then she'll go to it. All right. Ethereum is solid like that. All right. Now look at the bigger pattern. Go back to this chart. This is where we are right now. So what are we expecting? We are expecting price to come out from the zone. Look at the second leg development. Vector one, two and three. Okay. Is coming down. They are pushing price to get longs filled at lower prices. Zoom in. What do you see? You now see Ethereum slowly coming back up. Look at this. What's that magic number? Three pushes to the high. Three pushes. Three pushes. They do things in threes. Right? Drop on the 15 minute time frame. What do we see? We see the 50 EMA now acting as support. We've got this vector candle down here, which is what you should always be aware of. At some point, they may bring price back down to this point. Okay. Now, last time on the 8th of February. Okay, not the 8th of February. Let me move back a bit. There was a point in the chart on Bitcoin that they went back to. All right. Look at this. Where was it? Here we go. I know. Right here. So. You can see right here, there is a green vector candle. I'll zoom in. You can see that green vector candle that appeared. Now, by the token of understanding that price will come back down to that point, how long did it take for it to get there? Well, from this point, it moved up, consolidated, kept moving, moved up there, came down, came down, came down, and then it recovered it. All right, so if I zoom out, you'll see that price came back and recovered that vector candle. So that was done on the 8th of June and they recovered it on the 22nd of June. Okay. It didn't recover it straight away, but they brought price back down towards it. Why? Well, they had positions in that zone. This is at the turning point. This is when they got people's attention. This is when they managed to take out all the liquidation points for the guys who were going short. All right. They moved price sharply back up because remember, look. Someone had to go short in that zone. Yeah? Someone had to go short for that wick to be printed. So, going back to Ethereum, where do we see her going next? Well, look at Ethereum's psychological high and low. It's in sight. These areas tend to act as magnets like the daily open. Look at her conviction of the daily open from today. It came away from the zone, three pins to the low. Four even, stopping volume, price crosses over, all right, goes above the daily open, conviction of the daily open, and crosses above the 50. Now, the thing is, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are flat at the 50 EMA. What's happening here? Are the market makers looking to try and shift out of the zone? We will only know as Asia starts to play out. Okay? Now... There are a couple of points in the chart that may have some interest for potential zones for Bit for Ethereum to get to. Now remember, I'm not looking for Ethereum to go to 4,000 yet. That's not what I'm, I'm interested in. I'm interested in high probability setups. So this area here is where I'm anticipating Ethereum to get to at some point. 
what will need to happen? Will she need she would need to confirm the 50 EMA? The 13 EMA now is on its way to crossing upwards and it's going to cross over the 50 EMA. That will tell me that things are starting to change in our favor. All right? But we need to wait for that to happen. We we are dealing with uncertainty, guys, and I I will not cover, you know, I will not cover your eyes with wool or mislead you in any way, okay? What we say now about what we would ideally like to see in price, you know, it may play out, it may not play out, but you have to be okay with the idea of it not playing out because there's no guarantee that it's going to play out. That is where you can get away from being fearful about something that you're not going to know, that you don't know about. Why are you scared of an outcome that you don't know what's going to happen? All you know is how much money you're going to risk. That's what you know. If you are scared to lose that money, don't take the trade. But you can't be scared of an outcome that hasn't existed yet. It's like seeing a dog, right? If you've been bitten by a dog in your life, you'll know that the next time you see a dog, you can attach some aspect of fear. I'm only talking about trading in the zone by Mark Douglas. That's exactly what he talks about. We attach the concept of fear to the unknown. Because our brains are programmed to know what's going to happen next. Well, I'm sorry, guys. This is trading. It's the hardest, easiest way to make money. You're never going to know what's going to happen next. If we did, we certainly won't be sat on this stream listening to what we're talking about right now. Because we'd be out there picking points in the chart and making a ton load of money. All right? When you come away from the idea of caring about what is going to happen next, or should I say... Having to know what's going to happen next. Different story, man. You approach the game differently. You then start focusing on the execution of the trade because all you can control is the amount of money that you have and where you enter. Now, your goal is to try and get your entry down to a point where it's somewhat accurate so you don't really see a drawdown. So you can pretty much make, you know, a reliable rate of income. Okay? Okay. But people get caught up in the idea of, oh my God, I need to know what's going to happen. I've spent too much time on this setup. I've got too much money that, you know, I don't want to risk this much. Oh, I need to pay this. I need to pay that. Nah, man, yeah, just cut out. You know, you got a better chance at blackjack. All right. You seriously will do better, have better odds in a casino if you're going to come to this game with that sort of mentality. All right. So, we're going to talk about altcoins, all right? So, I'm going to flip over. I hope that has covered some aspect and introduced you into the idea of what we do in this streams if you are new, okay? I will talk about dollar yen today, okay? Dollar yen just did what she needed to do. She recovered the green vector candles. But also, fair, um, the Fed speaker, he spoke today, which pretty much triggered some downward movement. The range daily low was always going to be taken as well. Um, I haven't placed any trades today because I was on Piraton and it was just rolling my mind. I, just, I, was, I was all over the place with it. Never trade when I'm intoxicated with medicine or anything like that. And this is all for hay fever as well. But look, they come and broke through the psychological high and the psychological low. Now we're waiting to see price come back up. Okay. This is pro potentially the start of a new pattern. Look at the size of this W formation. Boy, when this plays out. Yeah. If this W formation plays out, we're going to be laughing. That's what I'm anticipating. It's a very big W formation. Absolutely massive. If this plays out and price continues back up. Yippee-ki-yay, we're going to be coming back up to this zone right here, which will be the zone that I'm expecting her to get to, which is 111,407. But a good indication of where people are economically, on, or should I say their interpretation of the economy itself, flip over to gold. Look at gold. All right. These are the zones in the chart that I'm expecting gold to come back down to because right now they are fearful. They are trying to put their money into gold. Okay. They are very scared. Here is an example of the three hits to the high. Look at this. Look at gold. All right, and we're going to go over to the altcoins. So you've got one, two, three hits to the high. 
So if it hits it the third time, open the trade and go long. That's what that principle would say. But look what actually happened. Look at this red vector candle. It opened here. All right. It spiked up and realized those guys and they were quite happy because they've been trading on the idea of breaking out the third time. It's hit it three times, so now this is the the two times, so now it, this is the third time it's hitting it. Open your trades, happy days. Then what? They drop price straight away. Take out all the orders, all the stops for the guys who went long here. Recover some of the shorts in this point that they built earlier, and then reverse back up and throw those guys out. A brutal game. And those books are on Amazon. And you can just quickly go and buy one, read it, and think that you know the game by simply just waiting for the third hit. People get caught, man. All right, then. So let's flip over to Trading View. All right. Let's have a conversation about coins, man. What coins are moving? Right. Matic, I've been seeing a lot about this. Okay, index crypto. Here we go. Let's have a look at Matic. See what she is saying. Hmm. What's the one minute time frame? Flip over to the one hour. Here we go. Oh, so we've been drawing this pattern. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Look at that for a projection. Oh my days. Not bad, eh? Not bad. Now, I don't look at the altcoins. Everyone knows that. But when I do, I draw out the pattern and see what happens. We've now come back to Matic. Okay, and look at the cycle that she's been doing. M formation, drop. Okay. Rise, retrace, rise, retrace. Is this the level? Yeah, because we're expecting her to come down to this point. Funnily enough, okay. Am I bullish or am I bearish? I'm neither. It is a little bit crooked. Sorry, Cretania, it's not perfect. <laughs> All right, then. But does are you familiar with this? Is anybody familiar with this cycle? Because we only had it a few moments ago. Yeah? We only had it a few moments ago. Whoa. We are now effectively coming out of the final phase of the cycle. By this principle. Yeah, look. By that principle, we're coming in the final phase of it. All right? So if we zoom in and take a closer look. Oh, God. It's so small. You can see that it's now trying to form the first leg. So we can actually draw on here the path. And wait and see if by token she is going to play out like this. Alright. Remember I drew a bigger pattern earlier for that. Alright. But that is by principle where we're expecting Matic to end up. So we could project that she could come towards the 1.16 zone. That's where she may end up before things change. Alright. Okay. Can you see KB and CLR? Okay. Now, what you will find is cheaper coins tend to not get that many explosive moves. I don't really like looking at cheaper coins, to be honest with you. Quite volatile, but some of them trade well. All right. I'm not, and the way I determine how well they trade is based on the wicks. All right, if you don't see too many wicks, it trades well. All right, there are coins out there that are just pure wicks. All right, it's just price getting spiked up and down. You know, Toby in his bedroom has brought 800,000 
of whatever coin and it's just spike price and then it's just come straight back down again all right we're looking on the bigger time frame of ckb nervous network i believe it is wow we are like the depths of this right now i mean boy we look where we are we are pretty much at the point where she last made the move There we are right there. If I draw a horizontal line. Where is it? Exactly at the open of that candle. And go right. What do we get? Wow. 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 Look at that for precision. Look at where they stopped price, man. At the start of the vector candle where they started to initiate those bag of orders before. Look at where price turns. And you're saying to me this game is not manipulated. Come on. Please. Okay. Big two weeks is coming. I know it is, man. There's going to be some big movements. Okay. That's Matt um, CKB for you, my friend. CLR, was it? C-E-L-R, I think it was. Seller network. Okay. So we had a little bit of a... Here we go. Nice little projection point right there. Kind of came in. W formation. Rise. Retrace. Continuation. Hit the 200 EMA. Pull back. And that's on the four hour time frame. Remember, yeah? So that is quite a big move up. But that played out nicely for us. Happy days. I think I'm going to go back to doing these altcoins, man. I think these patterns play out so well on these altcoins. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. Okay, then. Let's have a look at XLM. Stella. All right, then. Cool. So, what have we got right here? Um, okay. Okay. Let me just highlight this point in the chart. What am I looking for here? It's a four hour time frame. Flip down to the hourly. I should see. Oh my God. There we go. Is that starting on the vector candle? Yet again. Always when the vector candle's coming away from that point, that's where they stop at. It's bizarre, isn't it? Absolutely bizarre. So, flip back over to price right now. We've got a lot of dead ground right there. So we should... I know there's probably shortcuts that will make pro um, the chart go straight to the right, but I don't know them. Is it that? Okay, happy days. Again, pattern. This could be the start of a new pattern. Maybe a small pattern. But I'm waiting for them to retrace back down to come back up. That's what I'm expecting. So, if the M1 pivot confirms, price comes up to the M3 pivot, happy days. Rejects the M4 zone, comes down to test the M2 pivot... Then the M2 pivot will come up towards the M4 on the retrace. And then if the retrace comes up and breaks the M3 retraces and tests that point, the M5 will be realized 0.252 is where we could be sitting for Stella. XLM. That could be a point in interest. Yes. I'll have a look at Algorand. Algo. What you're finding... Oh, hello. Very interesting. Very interesting. Ah, now Algo is literally trading the same way Bitcoin is. You notice that? Look at that. Trading exactly the same way. All right. So is this going to now form into a W formation? Or is this the bigger W formation? It all depends on what perspective we look at it from. All right, because we've got these two points in the chart right here. If we just go by the principle of this being the start of it, all right, because remember, it's stuck in a range. 
Okay. So if we go by push down, retrace back to the 800, come back down. Now it's stabilizing. We are waiting to see if it's going to come back up because it can do that, guys. This is clean accumulation. They're just building and building and building in this zone till they get a clean definitive direction, which will then take us towards this point of interest in the chart. Where is it? Right there. That is where it may take us. There she is. No. That's not what I want. Okay. So that's our go for you. What else you got? Give me your coins, man. Vet. Let's have a look. Okay. There you go. That's what we're waiting for. So we had the first objective there. Come down. Waiting for it to come back up. Hasn't happened. It's now just pulled straight back down. So variation on the theme. Look at that. Yeah. We're waiting for the level one to form. Okay. What is going on here? Let me close that. Delete that. Okay. We're waiting for level one to finalize. Earlier run in the chart. What did we show you? Yeah. Look at what we showed you earlier on. The first level rise, retrace, up, level one, drop, rise, level two. Well, in this instance, level one can come all the way down here before it comes up to form level two. Okay, look at that. It's come all the way down and it hasn't taken out the first leg. It's taken the second, but the second leg didn't really last that long anyway before it came back up. But look at the first leg. Still there. Price is there. Is this the point that they decide to make the move? Looking at the price action itself. You can see that it's now trying to come up above the 50 EMA. That's a good sign. As long as it tries and breaks above the 50 EMA, that's a good sign for us. Let's flip back to Bitcoin a second and see what's going on there. The Bitcoin ain't really doing much. Ethereum on the other token, she ain't doing much either. Okay then, cool. Right, okay then. What else we got? Let me have a look at your coins. For the lols, do sheep. Yes, I'll look at sheep. <laughs> hey, man. She's on. She's got her own swap now. Don't knock it. Here we go. Oh, really? Is that what you're doing, sheep? Okay, then. Happy days. See, because sheep has just actually come on the scene, guys. There's not that much data for her, to be honest with you. If I look at the four hourly. I mean... Yeah, there is quite a bit, actually, to be fair. Where is it? Ah, that ain't shit. There's nothing there. There's nothing there whatsoever. Now, that coin itself, I mean, I personally wouldn't be looking at trading coins like that. Although it does have a decent market cap, but I personally wouldn't trade something so cheap like that. All right? I wouldn't shit trade it, but look at that smart W right there. So addictive, isn't it? You can't help but notice it. Is everything starting? Because these are phases that happen in trading, guys. And we have to be okay with that. We can't just always be like, yeah, price is rising, price is rising, cool. All right? Take the bad with the good, good with the bad as such. Okay? Where are we at? What was it that I looked at yes last week? Um, was it Alpha? Not Alpha. Was it Alpha? Was it? Oh, what was it? What made a good 13, 14, a 37% increase? What made that? Actually, I'll have a look at ICP as well. ICP, I'll have a look at that. Because everyone's been talking about that. Oh, wow. No, no one ain't saying anything about it right now. You'll find this is happening across the board, guys. Look. Look at where the, vo the notable volume's coming in. But look at the vector candles, how they get recovered. Look at that. So by that token, we should be coming down to here if they're finished with this zone, which will sit at that point in 31. Yeah. I 
Is it Alice? Ave, that's it. No, is it? Was it Ave? Was it? It was, actually. Yeah, it was. There we go. There's our pattern right there. So that's what we are expecting, respecting now a continuation back up. W formation, rise level 1, drop, rise level 2, drop, rise level 3, waiting for the peak. Or it's going to come back down and effectively reset. If it comes back down, see, this is where the level gets reset. Okay? That is a rise level 2. That's where it starts to consolidate. But it's broken down that zone. So now we could be seeing a pattern forming. All right? As long as you trade away from the peak formation, always trade away from the point that it came out the most aggressively from. Trade away from it. That's the peak formation. Never trade into it unless you are expecting the turn on the actual cycle itself. Okay? Trade away from it. For, for those who are just coming into the system, trade in, trade away from the pattern. So if you've got a peak formation and rise, retrace, and you are here, you trade long. All right, you're only looking for longs. All right, now that price is below the 50 EMA, we're waiting to see if it's going to go back up. We'll look at the recovery of the vector candles, stopping volume at this point. So this may be the truth. See, I said that this is a reset of the level two consolidation, but if price comes back up, it will then still be a valid level two if it does come back into this consolidated zone. It's only when it trades completely away from it, retrace, and it doesn't go back, doesn't go back up. If it trades completely away from it then it would invalidate the level 2 rise. Because that's where we are right now at that point in the chart. Look, we're coming down here. If it comes up to the 50 and rejects it, it will come back down and that would invalidate the actual level 2 consolidation, which means that it could be on site to take the level 1. If it takes level 1, we'd be expecting a pattern in this point. If it comes down lower and takes out the actual peak formation, whole cycle is reset. We're waiting for a new cycle. Okay? But that's only on the basis that the, the 50 EMA right now on the hourly gets confirmed. All right. Um, what we got? AXS. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of more guys and then I'm going to end the stream for you. Wow. What is going on there? What is happening there? Can anyone shed light onto what's going on with this? I know Ravencoin's been moving. Oh, yes. I'll look at XRP. Can anyone shed any light on why AXS has actually moved like this? Has it had any news come out? Is What's the actual project itself? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Gaming platform. Okay. Sweet. Axe Infinity is an insane community. Awesome. There you go. Community, community. So where has it gone to? Oh, it's at, is it at its all-time high? Wow. Look at that, man. The shorts on that are going to be screaming. Right. So here's a little bit of a concept. Okay. Always pay attention to the coins that are moving. Okay. Nicely like this. When the majors aren't actually doing anything. Okay. If they're putting their money into this, all right, this is of course community, news, project, utility, whatever. Okay. Pay attention to it. Keep in mind with it. All right. Because every retrace down, you're going to see the interest come in if the interest is going to remain there. Okay. Like here, for example price drops back down at this point when it made an all-time high people are like 16 dollars right this is bound to drop now it's going to drop back down comes back down doesn't even touch the 50 ema and oh actually tell a lie it does look on the one hour time frame look at this so look comes up all-time high comes back down by the dip notable volume comes in at the lows red candle blue candle formation right there comes back up confirms the 50 ema bang it moves up continues next consolidation does exactly the same thing support comes in at the 50 support support red vector candle right there recovery happens up it goes okay one more hit bang to the 50 then it moves again we're anticipating now that it's going to come back down to the 50 now here is the clue i think this is where it starts to turn 
Why? Because for every push up, okay, vol this volume candle right here, I only seen three clean pushes up. All right, now it's drifted up ever so slightly. Now they're pinning the highs. The 50 EMA is extended. We are going to be seeing a retrace on this candle, at least back down to the 50, come back up and then drop again to test the 200 to really test the intention. And of course, people are going to be taking profits as well. So that's one aspect that we need to consider in there. Okay. Cool. All right, one more. Let me look at... All right, let's look at cake. We all like a bit of cake. Cake is forming a massive pattern. All right. She actually tanked down. Vector candles to the lows. She's stabilizing right there. Okay. Everything's on a reset right now. There are patterns forming. When price is ranging to the side and not going anywhere, there are levels. Now, of course, I can pull up I can pull up the one minute time frame and I can show you a weekly pattern. Alright? I can show you what level it's at, even on the five minute, on the fifteen minute, thirty minute. On the one hourly and the four hourly, you're going to get the true cycle there. Okay, right now, there's no, we are right now. But it all depends. Look, this is the bigger pattern. There's a bigger W formation right there. Okay, if you're looking at this W formation, where are we? Well, we're still in level one. At what point do you say at we are in a W? So is this the first leg drop? Nah, not really a strong drop right there. Is that the rise? Retrace. Rise up, level one. Rise up, level two. We're now waiting for the rise, level three peak formation. Is that where we are? On this smaller pattern right here? Variation of the theme, my friends. Variation on the theme. Okay then, guys. So, I'm going to call it a night. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Okay, if you are new, make sure to like and subscribe. Get over to the social media. We are running a new Facebook page as well. So we're going to try and grow that aspect as well. If you want to learn more about the strategy itself, head over to the Discord. And we can talk more about it there. We've also got a Patreon as well. So my patrons, tomorrow, stage. I'm going to be sending you guys a notification shortly. Letting you know about another setup that we're going to be talking about. Alright. But other than that, it's been a pleasure speaking to you guys. Alright. Mad love and respect to all of you. And let's get, what can I say? What more can I say to you? Yeah? Trade well, think well, all right? And don't get fooled by these, these players we call market makers. They are our friends, remember that. We need them to be, we need them to have the trickery. We just need to be aware of it, all right? So, the hunt begins again tomorrow. Let's get it. Take care of yourselves, guys. Peace.